Hello sports fans, it is Monday, March the 3rd, the year 2014, and as usual, a lot to get to in the sports world, so let's get it going right now. Glad to be back with you guys. I'm going to do a little potpourri today. We're going to hit on a few different subjects. Let's start with the top 25 in college basketball, because we are coming down the home stretch in college basketball. Only a week to go in the regular season, then we go to the conference tournaments, and then we are in March Madness. So if you're a team on the bubble right now, you have to make your move right now. You are running out of time. New top 25 is out. Let's go through it real quick. Number 25, Kentucky. To me, they've been disappointing. I know they have all freshmen, but they were saying this recruiting class was going to be the best in college basketball history. Not even close. Kentucky, very disappointing at number 25. Number 24, Iowa. I like the direction the Iowa program is heading in. They've had a lot of lean years in the past decade, but they look like they're heading in the right direction. Number 23, Oklahoma. I love the job uh, Kruger does as the coach there. We know he can flat out coach. Oklahoma are a nice team. Number 22, Michigan State. Finally getting healthy. I mean, they've been banged up all year. Now they have a full squad. Look for them to make some noise. They're always a good tournament team. Number 21, New Mexico. I mean, I love that home field they have there. That home court is to die for, the pit in Albuquerque. I've said it a million times. You ever get to Albuquerque, New Mexico, go check out a New Mexico basketball game in the pit. You will love it. Number 20, Memphis. They had a huge win against Louisville over the weekend. Number 19, UConn. They had a big win over Cincinnati over the weekend as well. Number 18, SMU. Yes, let me say it again. Number 18, SMU. Are you kidding me? How good of a coach is Larry Brown? Larry Brown can flat out coach. He won an NCAA title with Kansas. He won an NBA title with the Detroit Pistons. Larry Brown is a fabulous coach. SMU never did anything in college basketball until Larry Brown got there. Larry Brown in a couple seasons has SMU number 18 and they are going to the big dance. What a coach Larry Brown is. Number 17, St. Louis. If you haven't seen St. Louis, definitely check them out. Very fundamentally sound team. Really nice team to watch. Number 16, Iowa State. At the beginning of the year, this was my surprise team, so it's no shock to me that they're ranked 16. Number 15, Cincinnati. They had a tough loss against UConn over the weekend. Tough, gritty, defensive-minded team. The coach is really gritty and gutty as well. I like Cincinnati's team. I question whether they have enough scoring to get to the Final Four. Number 14, North Carolina. Is there any more of an up-and-down team than North Carolina? They beat the good teams. They lose to the bad teams. They lose three in a row. They win eight in a row. Up and down, they are up now playing fabulous basketball. Number 13, Creighton. I mean, I've said it a million times. McDermott is going to win player of the year. I still can't believe the crowd Creighton gets in Omaha, Nebraska. They get like 16,000, 17,000 people a game there. Tremendous home court there in Creighton. McDermott, like I said, fabulous player. Should win player of the year. Number 12, Michigan. We know Beeline can coach. Michigan made the Final Four last year. Looks like their big man is going to be out for the year. I don't think he's going to make it back. That's a big loss for Michigan. Don't know if they can make a run two years in a row to the Final Four, especially without their big man. Number 11, Louisville. Everyone's kind of forgotten about Louisville this year, but they are ranked number 11. Haven't beaten any quality teams. They don't have a great record against good teams. Lost over the weekend in Memphis. Still can't count them out. Uh, can't count them out, I should say. Rick Pitino, fabulous coach. Number 10, San Diego State. Fisher is another unbelievable coach. He built this team from scratch. Built this San Diego State program from the bottom. Now they are a big drawer out there. They call the San Diego State basketball game the show. They get a full house every time. Another one of these good defensive-minded teams. What a job by Fisher out there at San Diego State. Number nine, Wisconsin. Another one of my favorite coaches, Bo Ryan. I really hope he gets to a Final Four. He does a tremendous job. Number eight, Kansas. A sloppy loss to Oklahoma State over the weekend. They had a 10-point lead late in that game and just melted at the end of the game. Didn't like what I saw from Kansas. We know Kansas has talent all over the board. A lot of young talent, though. Wiggins, the big man, a lot of young talent still. Kansas is going to be right there for the Final Four. Didn't like the loss to Oklahoma State, though. Number seven, Syracuse. What happened to Syracuse? Now, listen, they're ranked seventh. We know they're one of the best teams. 
They have not been playing good basketball at all for at least a month. Danger time for Syracuse. Keep an eye on them. Number six, Villanova. Listen, I've been saying it for years. How good of a coach is Jay Wright? I mean, how good of a coach is this guy? How good of a recruiter is this guy? I mean, he's already been the one Final Four. Can he do it again with this Villanova squad? I mean, Jay Wright continues to do it. Fabulous coach at Villanova. Number five, Virginia. It's about time we start giving Virginia some respect. They beat Syracuse over the weekend. What a job Virginia has done. We know the coach is good. He was good at Washington State. His father was good at Washington State. He comes over to Virginia and he's doing it. I mean, lights out here. Virginia, ranked number five in the country. That is hard to believe. They are the surprise of college basketball. And it's about time a lot of people start giving them respect, including me. Glad to see they're up to number five in the rankings. Number four, Duke. Hey, are you surprised that Duke's up there again? Beginning of the year, they were struggling. They weren't playing the typical Duke defense. But as long as you got Coach K, you got Parker, you know you're going to be a really, really solid team. Duke number four. Number three, Arizona. Since they lost one of their best players to injury for the year, they have rebounded. They've stabilized a little bit here. Arizona playing better now. They're number three. Number two, Wichita State. They go through the whole regular season undefeated. Who doesn't like Wichita State? I don't care what fan of what team you are, you have to like Wichita State. What a tremendous story they are. They went to the Final Four last year. Let's see if they can get back this year. Won't be easy. Number, number one, Florida. The Florida Gators. Billy Donovan looking for his third national title. And I'll tell you what, if Billy Donovan gets his third national title... He's up there in the elite company, all-time great coaches. I mean, three national titles. Now, listen, they got work to do. They got to win it this year. But still, he's already got two national titles. Florida was a quote-unquote football school. He's turned it into a basketball powerhouse. Florida playing a lights-out ball for a while now. So they are definitely a threat to win it all. That's your top 25. As far as who they say has the first four buys as of right now, Cal, BYU, Baylor, and Oklahoma State would be in. They would have a bye. Baylor, by the way, is, is seventh in the Big 12. That's how much they respect the Big 12 conference. That They're seventh in the conference, but still making the tournament. As far as the last four in, they have Arkansas, Oregon, Tennessee, and Minnesota. Oregon really rebounded. They were struggling, uh, struggling for a while. So that would be your last four in. As far as your first four out, right now it would be Providence, Nebraska, St. John's, and Florida State. Those teams have work to do. Time is running out. And the next four out, Missouri, Dayton, Georgetown, and Louisiana Tech, they have some work to do as well. Now, remember, you win your conference tournament, you get an automatic bid to the dance. But still, you don't want to have to rely on that. So these teams really need to do some things this last week of the season. So that's kind of where your college basketball is. Like I said, we are running out of time. Last week of the regular season, Next week is the conference championships, and then we are into March Madness. Well, let's transition a little bit. Let's go over to the NBA. Let's start in the East. Here's who would be in the playoffs right now in the East. Indiana's one, Miami two, Toronto three, Chicago four. How about Chicago? Is there any better coach than Thibodeau? They don't have Rose again for the year. They trade Dang. They don't have the same team they had last year. And here they are again, fourth in the East. Thibodeau is a fabulous coach. And how good of a player is Noah? Gives you everything he has every game. So Chicago, four. Washington, five. They're starting to do some things. Brooklyn, six. After the slow start, they've been playing better. Charlotte, seven. Hey, give Charlotte some credit. What, they win like four games two years ago? And Atlanta is hanging on to that eighth seed despite the injury to Horford. The Knicks are done. Finished. Goodbye. Hard to believe the Knicks won't make the playoffs after winning 50 games last year and winning the first round of the playoffs. What an awful, despicable job by the New York Knickerbockers from top to bottom. As far as the East goes to me, it's Indiana and Miami. Interesting to see who gets home court. Right now, Indiana has home court. Very important they get it. If Miami gets home court, I like Miami to get out of the East. Indiana gets home court. I give them a shot. But to me, it's a two-team race in the East, Indiana and Miami. As far as the West, the West is absolutely loaded. Oklahoma City, one. San Antonio, two. Portland, three. The clip is four. Houston, who's playing great ball, is five. Golden State, who's a solid team, is six. Phoenix, seven. Dallas, eight. Memphis, about a game and a half out of a playoff spot. Minnesota, five back in all kinds of trouble. But the West is loaded. Who's going to come out of the West? 
I mean, you got about five teams, Oklahoma City, San Antonio, Portland, the Clippers, Houston, who could all come out of the West. I don't know who's coming out of there. I mean, I would favor Oklahoma City just because of Durant, but Westbrook's just getting back. West is absolutely loaded. Should be some intriguing basketball come playoff time in the NBA, so that's where you are right now. As far as the NHL, as far as the hockey goes, as far as the Eastern Conference, here's who would be in the playoffs right now. In the East, Boston, Montreal, Tampa Bay, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, and the Rangers, and Toronto. Now the eighth spot is up for grabs right now. Right now it's Detroit, but Washington, Columbus, and New Jersey all right there. So that race for the eighth spot is going to be a good one. As far as the West, St. Louis, Chicago, Colorado, Anaheim, San Jose, L.A. all look good. Minnesota's in solid shape. Vancouver and Dallas battling for that last playoff spot, as well as Winnipeg, Phoenix, and Nashville. So all sorts of things could change in the NHL as far as, you know, matchups, who's the one seed, who's the eighth seed. A lot of stuff to be, term uh, to be determined still in the NHL. That's where you are right now. Uh, I caught some boxing over the weekend. Chavez Jr. had a unanimous decision over Vera. Uh, remember, in their first fight, it was a very controversial fight. A lot of people thought Vera won. I mean, this fight, to me, it was Chavez all the way. He definitely deserved the decision. I don't think Vera is a great fighter. He gives you some, uh, you know, a really good effort, but he's not an elite fighter. Chavez should have beat him the first time more handedly, and he did beat him the second time. We'll see who Chavez uh, fights in the near future. There's a lot of big names coming up with his name attached to it. We'll see who he actually fights. Keep an eye on Chavez. You never know what you're going to get from Chavez. He's good one fight, bad the next. He's out of shape. He's in shape. He has, you know, out-of-the-ring problems. I mean, all sorts of things with Chavez Jr., but he did get the win on Saturday night. As far as some upcoming boxing in the next few months, uh, this weekend you got on Showtime pay-per-view, you got Alvarez and Angulu. I haven't gotten over that Alvarez got shut out by Mayweather, so I don't know if I'm going to pluck down my money to watch that on pay-per-view. I'll probably watch it on tape. Good undercard, Santa Cruz on the undercard. As far as April 12th, you have Pacquiao and Bradley. That's an HBO pay-per-view. Of course, this is the rematch of the fight where Bradley absolutely stole the, the win against Pacquiao. Pacquiao won that fight clear. I mean, it was just uh, one of the worst decisions in boxing history. They are having the rematch now. I would expect Pacquiao to win. May 3rd on Showtime pay-per-view, you have Mayweather Maidana. I like this fight better than Mayweather Khan. They were talking about Mayweather Khan for a while. Thank goodness we got Khan out of there. We get Maidana in there. Remember, Maidana just upset Broner, so that was a nice win for Maidana. Now can he do it again? Can he beat Mayweather? That's asking a lot. June 6th, HBO pay-per-view from Madison Square Garden. Martinez against Cotto. Maybe I'll go to that fight here in New York. Very interesting fight. Cotto's going up in weight. The fight's at the Garden. That's, uh, you know, Cotto will have a huge home crowd. Martinez is coming off a lot of injuries. Hasn't looked like the same fighter in the last two years. A lot of stories and subplots in that fight. Kind of a toss-up fight. I think on their best day, Martinez is, in, is better. But Martinez hasn't looked good at all in the last two years. Cotto is fighting at home. Very intriguing fight. That's June 6th on HBO Pay-Per-View. So that's some of your upcoming boxing. I did catch some golf over the weekend, the Honda Classic, where McElroy absolutely collapsed. He played three great rounds of golf. He's winning into the fourth round, and he just flat out fell apart. What is wrong with McElroy? I can't put my finger on it. So he fell apart. Tiger Woods, I mean, he hurts his back. Tiger Woods again with all these injuries. Is Tiger Woods going to catch Jack? I mean, we thought this was going to be just, he was going to fly past Jack. Now I'm not so sure. Tiger Woods has not won a major in a while. He's nursing knee injuries all the time. Now he's got the back injury. You never know what you're going to get from Tiger Woods. You just never know. I mean, the first two rounds, he wasn't great. Then round three, he shoots an amazing round. Then the fourth round, he goes out with a back injury. Don't know what you get from Tiger Woods. And Henley wins in a four-man uh, playoff. So I did catch some uh, golf over the weekend. Masters not too far away. Uh, real quick on the Olympics, since I haven't touched on it. Uh, real quick on the Olympics. First of all, good job by Russia as far as no incidents there in Russia. Everyone was worried about security and all that kind of stuff. No incidents at the Olympic Games. I was happy to see that. As far as overall, listen, Russia had the overall medals uh, win. Russia had the most medals. USA was second. Norway third. Canada fourth. And the Netherlands were fifth. 
As far as the gold medals, Russia was first, Norway was second, Canada was third, USA fourth, Netherlands and Germany fifth. Wasn't the greatest Olympics for the USA. Listen, listen they finished second in overall medals. I, I don't want to kill them. It wasn't the greatest Olympics for the USA. I mean, very disappointing on the hockey side. Canada wins the gold again. Sweden the silver, Finland the bronze, but the USA, after going undefeated in the preliminary rounds, they end up getting shut out by Canada and Finland. They don't even medal. Major disappointment there. And then on the women's side in hockey, in the gold medal game, the United States women's team is up 2 nothing with three minutes to go in the gold medal game, and they lose in overtime to Canada, one of the worst losses in Olympic history for the USA. Absolutely horrible loss. I don't know how you ever get over something like that. So the hockey was very disappointing. As far as White, the snowboarder, he didn't medal at all. That's shocking. Uh, Davis, the speed skater, he didn't medal at all. That was shocking. Then the, uh, the speed skating team for the U.S. was complaining about the new suits. Hey, listen, you got four years to prepare for the Olympics. You didn't try on these suits before you got to Russia? I mean, come on. I mean, I don't know if they affected it or not. They said they were slowing them down. You got to have all this stuff worked out before you get to Russia. You can't, you know, not put on a suit and then put it on the day of the Olympics. I mean, come on, you got to try these suits on. I don't know if that's just a convenient excuse. I don't know what the deal is. I don't know if it really slowed them down. Let me just say this. If it did slow them down, the suits, that's a terrible job by the USA. You have four years to prepare for this. You know, see what the suits can do before you get to the Olympics. And if they didn't slow you down, that's just a very bad excuse. So Dave is very disappointing as, long as, as well as all these speed skaters for the United States. As far as the skating, another disappointment for the United States, they did not medal in men's and women's figure skating for the first time since like the 1930s. Very disappointing there. Well, going back to the hockey for a minute, we'll also see if uh, in the next Winter Olympics if they use the NHL players. A lot of injuries in this Olympics. Remember, Tavares for the Islanders goes out for the year. We'll see. A lot of the NHL owners not happy with this. You can't blame them. Listen, here's the way I see it. You either have amateurs against amateurs or pros against pros. I have no problem with that. What I don't want is amateurs against pros. So let's have fair and square. I have no problem if it's amateurs against amateurs or pros against pros, but let's not have it pros against amateurs. We'll see what they decide in the next Olympics for uh, Korea. I personally like the NHL players, but I can understand if they're not going to be back. To me, I like the, winter, uh, the Summer Olympics better than the Winter Olympics myself. There's more events I get into. It's almost like you need another event at the Winter Olympics. It's like you just need some other event. Basketball, to me, is a Winter Olympic sport, but we know because the NBA players you know, are playing that they like to have that in the summer when they're off. The Winter Olympics needs to have another event. They just need to have something's missing there in the Winter Olympics. I am more of a Summer Olympics guy myself. I also had a hard time getting into this Olympics because Russia was nine hours ahead in time. So I was getting all the results very early in the day. So by the time, you know, the NBC telecast came on at prime time at like 7, 8 o'clock, I knew who won already. So very difficult time getting into the Olympics this year. But overall, hey, the United States was second in overall medals. I don't want to kill them. They were disappointing in some sports, though. But Russia did win the most medals. So that was the Olympics. As far as the Oscars, real quick, I don't know if you guys caught the Oscars last night. Listen, here's what I'd say about the Oscars. The show is about, what, three and a half, four hours long. Then you got the pre, you know, the, the red carpet, the after parties. To me, if you put on the Oscars the last half hour, you can catch all the big awards, which is exactly what I did. I put on the Oscars at 11.30, watched it till midnight, got all the big awards. I DVR'd the rest. I went back and watched a couple of the, uh, the supporting role uh, awards in the beginning of the show, and that was it. So I spent basically about 45 minutes watching this, and I got everything I needed. I don't need to see four hours of this show. I don't need to see all the performances. I don't need to see everyone trying to be funny. Everyone that gets up there tries to be funny, so I don't need all that. Anyway, as far as Best Picture, 12 years a slave wins Best Picture. I mean, you can't really argue with that. Very powerful movie. It is out on DVD this week. Go check it out. As far as Best Actor, Matthew McConaughey, very well deserved for Dallas Buyers Club. Very well deserved indeed. The way he transformed his body and his soul for this movie, very well deserved. Uh, Best Actress, Kate Blanchett for Blue Jasmine. She's good in everything. 
She's absolutely good in everything. I mean, I think that's her second Academy Award. She's good in everything she plays. Uh, best Supporting Actor, uh, Jared Leto for Dallas Buyers Club. Again, very well deserved, just like Matthew McConaughey transformed his whole body. I mean, I thought his speech was tremendous, by the way. I mean, was really, really good. Thanked his mother, Was seemed really down to earth. I enjoyed his speech. As far as Best Supporting Actress, uh, Lupita Nuanjo for 12 Years a Slave. I hope I'm pronouncing that name right. Uh, much deserved as well. I can't argue with that. Uh, Best Director went to Gravity. Uh, adapted Screenplay went to 12 Years a Slave. Original screen, uh, Screenplay went to the movie Her. That's kind of where you were in the Oscars. I thought a few movies that got snubbed. I thought Prisoners got snubbed with Hugh Jackman. I thought that was a very good movie. I thought that should have been up. I thought Tom Hanks should have been up for Captain Phillips. And I thought Harrison Ford should have been up for Jackie, uh, Jackie Robinson. So a couple snubs there. By the way, American Hustle, which was up for basically everything. Best picture, you know, a million people from that movie were up. They didn't win anything. They got totally shut out. Gravity looked like they took home the most awards, won a lot of the editing awards and the visual effects. I mean, no surprise there at all. If you ever saw that movie, I saw it in the theater in 3D. Absolutely spectacular to see it with the 3D, with the space shot. So Gravity wins the, uh, the most awards. I did not see all these movies. I did not see, uh, you know, uh, American Hustle, but that is coming out in a couple weeks. I am going to check that out. But I love Captain Phillips. I love Dallas Buyers Club. I liked Gravity. Nebraska, to me, was okay, but it needed, it needed a little something else. And I'm definitely going to check out 12 Years a Slave this week as well. So that's kind of where you were with your Oscars. Uh, believe it or not, baseball is right around the corner. We are only a few weeks away from the baseball season. The Dodgers actually open up in Australia, of all places, in a couple weeks. Hard to believe baseball's almost here. Believe it or not, this weekend the clocks go forward. Spring is a couple weeks away. Baseball right around the corner. As far as tonight, what to watch? Not much to watch tonight at all. Very slow night. As far as college basketball tonight, Notre Dame at North Carolina. I mean, Notre Dame has had a very disappointing season. You got Kansas State at Oklahoma State. Interesting game. Oklahoma State's on the bubble. As far as the NBA, you got Chicago, Brooklyn, Memphis, Washington. Those are your two big games tonight. When Chicago, Brooklyn, and Memphis, Washington are your two big games, it's not a big night in the NBA. As far as the NHL, you got Columbus, Toronto. It's a decent game. You got Montreal, LA. That's a nice game. But overall, not a lights out sports night tonight. I mean, I'll find something to watch, that's for sure. But not must watch TV tonight in the sports world. Anyway, you guys, thanks for tuning in. You guys, stay safe. I will be back with you guys once they announce the brackets for March Madness. We'll have Joe Spano back here for the uh, Final Four as well. So a lot to do. Be back with you guys once they announce the Final Four brackets. Thanks for tuning in. You guys, stay safe. Enjoy the games. Talk to you really soon. Take care.